Today we're going to talk about UFOs. It doesn't matter whether they're in an orange bag, a Ziploc bag, or a project box. They're always lurking at the back of our mind, taking up valuable brain space. So it's time to get them out of hiding and get them done. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. My last video about my quilt story struck a chord with so many of you. I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for all the empathy and the kind words. I just felt so snug and well cared for, just like a quilt. But what also came out in the comments is that we all have a ton of UFOs. They're in our sewing rooms, the back of our closets, in our garage, in the basement, and it's time to bring them out and give them some air. One current trendy cleanup method is to take all your projects and put them in a pile in the middle of your room or on your bed and just work your way through it. But personally, I find that it takes up a lot of energy and most of us will burn out before we ever get to the, the making part. So I feel it's best to take one, two, or three projects and deal with them and use your energy to get it done. Doesn't matter which ones you want to start with. You can choose the easy ones, you can choose the hard ones, grab two or three. Now I am defining a UFO as a project that you have put aside, you haven't worked on it for over a year, and you have no current plan to get it done. I do have projects that I've been working on that I will not finish for three years. Those are what I consider works in progress and those are not UFOs. So when you open your project, you're going to get a very gut reaction and it's going to be one of three things. It's going to be a yes, it's going to be a no, or it's going to be a eh, not sure, maybe. So let's deal with no first. When you open up a project and you get a strong negative reaction, my friends, life is too short to be spending time on projects that don't bring you any joy. Don't worry about how much the fabric costs. Don't worry about how much time you've invested in it. If a fabric or pattern brings up some really bad sojo, get rid of it. You sell it, you donate it, you incinerate it if you must. It's just that simple. Yes, projects are projects that you do want to finish. But somehow life got in the way and it got put on the back burner and it's just time to bring it back on the front. The first thing you want to do with your UFO is you want to find the pattern and you want to read it. You just want to re-familiarize yourself, how it's made and what's going forward. The second step is you want to evaluate how much of the quilt that you've actually done. <laughs> Sometimes it can be quite surprising. I had to laugh when I pulled this UFO out. I thought I was 50% along. It turned out I wasn't even 20% along. But it's good to have something visual or a checklist so that you know how much is completed. The other thing you have to look for, is there anything more that you need to complete your quilt? Batting, backing, and do you have to set a budget for it? And in going through these three steps, you're going to come to the fourth step, and that is realizing why you stopped in the first place. And the number one reason that we stop a UFO is because we've done something wrong, and it requires us to go backward before we go forwards. We have to spend a couple of days ripping out, or maybe we're just coming to terms with the mistake and realize it's not that bad and we can go forward. It could be that the project was just too darn repetitive, so going forward, you need to be able to pace yourself so you don't fall back into that. Or you're working with the wrong color and it's sucking the energy out of you. I do have some strategies for working through quilts that are not in your color zone. And when I make a video out of it, I'm going to put a connection for it up here. The next step is to plot a chart. Now, some of you may just jump straight into it and try to finish it with a burst of momentum. But personally, I like to set a checklist. A checklist will help you pace yourself so you're not overcome by boredom or all the issues when you're working outside your color zone. And the last step is to set a realistic start date and finish date. You don't have to start a UFO right now. Maybe you start it when you're finished the project that you're working on or you're going to do it when you go to the cottage or you're going to do it when you come back from a particular trip. You also need to set a realistic finish date. There's no rush. 
and steady over fast will get you to the finish line. So now let's deal with the much trickier, eh, not quite sure. There's a number of reasons for UFOs to be in this pile. But truly, the, the biggest reason is that you're not in love with it. It could be a beginner mistake in your enthusiasm for the new craft that you were doing. You made some bad choices, wrong fabric or pattern that stretched you too far or colors that weren't yours. Or perhaps you it's an old workshop project. You took a workshop at a conference and there was a fabric purchase list, but once you finished the workshop, you really didn't feel any momentum to finish. There, there are the what was I thinking project where you tried to stretch yourself, go outside your comfort zone. And there's a reason why it was outside your comfort zone or the two long gone quilts. You were going to make them for a child or a baby. Now they're going off to college or for a couple for their wedding and now they're getting divorced or for a special person who has since passed. What all these projects have in common is that you have cut pieces of fabric and some unfinished blocks. What they also have in common is that they require an investment of time and money to complete. You probably have batting to buy, backing to buy, binding. You may have to pay a long armor or pay long arm rental fees. And truly, do you want to make that investment to finish it? And if you don't, perhaps that project, the no pile. But what happens if you're still, Maybe. So you can take that project. Perhaps there's somebody in your life that you realize needs a quilt. Now, if you can take that person's face and put it with the quilt, knowing that they will appreciate it, is that enough motivation to get the quilt done? If it is, then we move it into the yes pile. What happens if you're still going, mm, maybe. If you took your finished blocks from your project, and you just put them in a simplified grid with a lot of negative space and then call it done. Is that enough to motivate you? Would you finish that kind of quilt? And if so, then let's move it into the yes pile. And if you're still going, not sure. Well, what happens if you took those same blocks and instead of making a big quilt, you just made a baby quilt or maybe a table runner or maybe a pillow? Is that enough to complete the project? And if that's enough, then we move it into the yes pile. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with this project right here. I've looked at it, I've seen, I've made some pieces, and I'm gonna turn it all into baby quilt. I'll be fast, done, and over. You could throw a Hail Mary to your quilting friends. You could host a stitch and chat, or at a retreat, just send out a request saying, please, can you help me make one or two blocks? Don't be embarrassed, that's what quilting friends are for. And of course, it's understood that if they need the help, you'll give them a hand. So if you like this idea, put it in the yes pile. And what happens if you're still not sure after this one? Well, there are projects, and this is one of them, where I just don't want to go forward, but I still like the fabric. So this is a layer cake. I didn't like the technique in the workshop. I managed to make two blocks. I put them together wrong and I cut them wrong. So I'm actually going to throw out these two blocks and I'm gonna put everything else back in my stash for another project. So are you still not sure? Well, truly, you're at the point of no. You're probably stuck on the fact that you've invested so much money or so much time in this project and you can't let it go. But the truth is, you've probably spent that money years ago. That money's gone, it's not coming back, and the item is becoming a ball and chain. It's just occupying space, and you never have any intentions of finishing it. Or you could be stuck on the, the point of giving up and what that might say about your character. We live in a society where we're constantly told, never give it up. But the truth is, you can't be held to a beginner mistake that you made years ago. The important thing is the lesson you learned from that mistake. And that is so much more valuable than the unfinished blocks. So if you're waiting for someone to give you permission to stop, I'm giving it to you now. Just move it into the no pile. There are quilters and organizations that will really appreciate your donation. So don't worry about the waste. Now, if you go through these steps and now you're motivated to make some of your UFOs, if you would like me to start a UFO challenge, please put them in the comments below. Please take a moment to check out one of my other videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell if you wanna be notified when I make new videos. 
You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram at Just Get It Done Quilts or on my website at JustGetItDoneQuilts.com. So take care and I'll see you next time.